we're not saying cryotherapy is like sex. I just would like to put that out there. I am. Oh, okay, well, listen. Um, okay. You know, D- different parts of the body doing different things. That's for sure. Almost, mm-hmm. you know, in, in reverse ways. Huh. But I can tell you the okay. residual effect is a high amount of endorphin release. And it's not just momentary. It's not in the moment. When you do a cold plunge, it sucks. It means like it's very painful and and, and short lived, but it's nonetheless very uncomfortable. <laughs> and part it. of the objective is to I'm breathe. Well, the part of the but, but part of it's to push through, stiff upper lip, if you will. Resilient. Don't and it's the benefit. It's a tight. So this is, by the way, the message of most things in health. It's it's an ounce. It's a it's an ounce of prevention for a pound of cure. Right. So it's a. Yeah. You know, that, that little bit of effort for a lot of result. But is there anyone yeah. that maybe shouldn't be doing that? Yeah, people with heart disease, heart conditions, known elevated uh, blood pressure. I mean, look, there's a small but nonetheless obvious risk in the literature for heart attack. Anything that's immediately shocking, that's vasoconstrictive, that puts a lot of strain. You can train yourself into a low heart rate, resting heart rate. But the point I'm trying to make is that anyone with a low resting heart rate, I don't care who you are, you get into a cold plunge you're up into the 80s or 90s. So if you start in the 80s and you've got heart disease and you go up into the 130s, 140s, eh, there's some problems there. 